Let's talk about power for a minute. Uh, you know, that's a word that has a particular stigma, you know, and a lot of people think negatively when you think about power. Well, leaders need power to operate effectively. They need the ability to influence and move and guide and uh, create direction for resources, and power is required to do that. Now, the stigma comes from the abuse of power, the, the overuse of power, or in many cases, the use of the wrong type of power. Now, power is part of that social projection or outer projection competency that we've been talking about because it really does represent the uh, uh, image that you present to others and it represents how you're able to get things done through people. Now, let's talk about power for just a minute in, in context of the five types of leadership power. The first type of leadership power is something called threat power. That is a if-then statement that if you don't, then I will, where the I will piece is a negative consequence. But the opposite of that, second type of power, is reward power. And that is also built on if-then statement. If you do, then you will receive, where the receive is kind of a positive outcome, a carrot on a stick, if you will. Third type of personal power, or, or, or leadership power in this case, is something called, it's been labeled as legitimate power, but I'm going to call it organizational power. It's where your box is on the org chart. You know, are, are, are you up here? Are you down there? Are you over here? It's the amount of power granted or the amount of authority granted formally by your organization. You see that used pretty commonly in military or paramilitary type hierarchies. You also see it in some organizations too, where a, you know, a director outranks a manager, who outranks a supervisor, who outranks a team lead. Fourth type of leadership power is something called expert power. And this is the one that we'll spend a little bit more time talking about. Expert power is the power that's based on your specific technical knowledge or industry-based knowledge that you bring along with you. Now, you see that utilized a lot in organizations that promote from within and also organizations that are very technically driven, i.e. engineering and medical fields and things like that. Now, expert power is a necessary functionality, but it's the one that can also be significantly, significantly overused. Because if you overuse your expert power, what happens is you create a vacuum on those underneath you where there's no development and growth. Because why would they? When you're the expert, why would they grow their skills when you have all the answers and you have all the solutions and you have all the directional elements? You don't give any room for anybody else to grow their expertise. Expert power can be overused, and it's a pretty common occurrence that it's overused. The fifth and final part of the power equation, the leadership power equation, is something called relational, or it's also been labeled as legitimate power. It kind of represents, in many cases, the ultimate use of the relationships that you've built in your organization and the relationships that you've built with your folks. Relational power quite simply is what can you get done through others based on the strength of relationships that you've built with them. An example of that, and I get you know laughed at pretty frequently when I talk about this example, if you have a critical printer that's broken in your office environment and a, a, a report or something it, it really hinges on this uh, printer being replaced or fixed, do you have the ability to pick up the phone and call somebody in purchasing or IT and get it replaced like that, and then trail for the necessary paperwork and required forms and approvals? Or do you have to go through all the steps that your uh, uh, organization is, has outlined? Now, I'm not encouraging anybody to skip steps or you know, go out and charge stuff on, uh, uh, at Office Depot and hope that somebody pays you back, but that's just an example. Can you use your influence and relationships to get things done? Or do you have to work through a systemic kind of process with a lot of policies and procedures and things like that? Now, again, that's called legitimate power for a reason, because it's the longest lasting form of all the power types.
Now, the one thing that I really want you to think about today and to really work on is the ratio of all five of those power types. The threat power, the reward power, the organizational power, expert power, and relational power. You have to use parts of those all the time in your leadership operation. What are the ratios of those power types that you use? Now, I don't want to give anything too much away before you think about that or process that, but the most effective leaders use relational power most frequently, and that's the biggest one, or if you think about it as a pie chart, it's the biggest percentage of power that they utilize, with expert being shrinking and then threat reward being smallest. So I guess I'd really, really like to encourage you to grow and build your relational power and maybe shrink down the use of your expert power a little bit. And above and beyond everything else, just think about the power types you use and when you use them.